Several weeks ago, I went to my bookshelf and I saw the used Latin book that I purchased 20 years ago. I took the book off the shelf, opened the cover, and there on the end sheet I saw in pencil, H. Kuhn, 64 Beacon Street, Boston, school, GWC Noble, 40 Winter Street, commenced February 3rd, 1881, one lesson per week to Mr. Noble, recitation 9 and a quarter a.m. on Thursdays, lesson about 45 lines. In 2013, with the internet and information literally at my fingertips, I thought I'd play my own history detective and see what I could find out about Hamilton Kuhn. Let me share his story with you. Hamilton Kuhn was born on January 8, 1866. It was the immediate aftermath of the Civil War and the assassination of a president. His father was Hartman Kuhn, who was the son of a wealthy merchant, also named Hartman Kuhn, and the member of a founding Philadelphia family. When Hamilton was just months old, his father Hartman left Philadelphia and moved the young family, consisting of wife Grace and son Hamilton, to Europe. Several years into their European sojourn, the family was living in Rome, Italy, and Hamilton's father, Hartman, was exercising a horse. His groomsmen warned him that the horse was fatigued and he shouldn't do any more jumping with the horse, but Hartman wanted to raise the rail and make another jump. The horse caught his hoof on the rail, threw Hartman, fell on him. Hartman was critically injured, he was helped home, and he died that evening in his sleep. Hamilton was just four years old. After burying their husband and father, Grace and Hamilton returned to the United States, living for a time with her family in New York and then in Boston, and eventually establishing their own household. Hamilton grew into a young man in the company of his mother's family, and in 1881 he was enrolled in the Noble Classical School of Boston, being groomed for university-level education. He graduated the prep school in 1883. He went on to Harvard University and earned three degrees, including one in law, and graduated in 1890, passed the bar exam the same year, and in 1891 he entered the employment of one Honorable Edmund H. Bennett of Boston and then into private practice one year later. As Hamilton was 27 years old in 1893, his contemporaries noted that he exhibited rare personal charm, exceptional intelligence, judgment, and moral insight, and a lively interest in public affairs. Additionally, he was fitted by temperament, character, and ability for an active life and work of the highest usefulness, but his health began to fail. His friends would later recall that he carried on stoically and sought relief from the harsh northern winters in the Bahamas. It was there in the winter of 1902 at Nassau, Bahamas. His illness was exacerbated by the long journey from Boston, and he died at the age of 36. His body was returned to the United States for burial in the family plot at Mount Auburn Cemetery, Cambridge, Massachusetts. At that time, it was remembered that for more than eight years, he lived the life of an invalid, a life of ever-recurrent, disheartening, and often intense suffering in which he could have hardly had a single moment free from pain or discomfort. My research might have ended there, were it not for Hamilton's mother, Grace. She outlived her husband by 38 years and her son by six years. And before her death in 1908, at the age of 68, she made provisions in her will for an endowment to Harvard University to establish a professorship in biological chemistry, the first such endowed chair in the United States, named for her beloved son Hamilton. In 1909, the value of her endowment was $175,000. In 2013, that's the equivalent of $4.5 million. And included in her will was the provision that the family cottage at Campobello Island be offered for sale to the owner of a neighboring cottage. The neighbor was Sarah Roosevelt. Sarah purchased the cottage in 1909 for her son and his family. As it is known, Sarah's son, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, would become the 32nd president of the United States, but not before FDR suffered a crippling illness during a visit to his Campobello Island cottage in the autumn of 1921. There, after an ocean swim, he fell ill and never again walked without assistance. The nature of the affliction suffered by Hamilton Kuhn in 1893 is unknown. I could not find any information about it, but in a different time, he might have been diagnosed with polio as FDR was some 28 years later. On this journey of discovery, I feel as though I've met Hamilton Kuhn and shared some of his successes and sorrows, and by laying bare the fabric of history through a connection as close as my bookshelf, it's been a personal experience. So I encourage you to check out your bookshelf or a used bookstore to see what invitations history has waiting for you.